Whatever time zone you're in, I think uh, we have people from all around the world uh, logging on to this event. Welcome to our 2021 Sammy Lee Annual Lecture. This is a lecture series that first began in 1982. We are coming up on our 40th anniversary. I think uh, colleagues here at UCLA will have to brainstorm about something really special to do next year for the big celebration. But in the meantime, we are delighted to bring you today's lecture. And I wanna say a little bit about the Sammy Lee Lecture Series. Uh, it's a series of lectures on Chinese art and archeology span that honors the life and philanthropy of respected businessman, art collector, and Chinese art authority, Sammy Yuguan Lee. It is presented annually through the Chinese Center of Chinese Studies at UCLA in partnership with the Fowler Museum and with the generous support of the Sammy Yuguan Lee Foundation. Special thanks to the Lee family, in particular Howard and Norma Lee. And again, we really appreciate all of those donors who make our events possible like this one. I also want to express thanks to Esther Zhou, Assistant Director of the Center for Chinese Studies for facilitating so many of these wonderful events and all the work she does behind the scenes. Today, we are so honored to be able to present to you the second in Professor uh, Sun Zhou Yong's series of talks. Today is the public lecture series. And before we bring our speaker out, I want to introduce two colleagues who are also helping to facilitate today's event. First, we have Professor Min Lee from the Departments of Asian Languages and Cultures and Anthropology. He is co-director of the Wensa River and Basin Archaeological Survey Project, which is a collaboration between UCLA and archaeologists in China. And he is the author of the book, Social Memory and State Formation in Early China. He will be kind of our backup interpreter. Um, I think our speaker today is going to primarily be speaking in English, but if we need interpretation help, he will be ready to go. Our second faculty member I want to introduce is Professor Lothar von Falkenhausen. He is a professor of Chinese art and archeology span at UCLA, the author of numerous important studies in the field, including Chinese society in the age of Confucius, the archeological evidence, suspended music, chime bells in the culture of Bronze Age China. And so without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Lothar and he will be our master of ceremonies. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, um, Dr. Sun, for being willing to speak to us for the second day in, the, in a row. We know it is very early in China, uh, on a Sunday morning, and you could probably think of other things to do with your time. But we have we are very much in your debt uh, here at UCLA, um, and I should explain that a little bit. Uh, but first, let me say that uh, Dr. Sun received his undergraduate education at Hebei University in Xi'an, the uh, capital of Shanxi, which is one of the great archaeological provinces of China. And um, then he went on to receive a PhD in, at La Trobe University in Australia under um, Professor Liu Li, who has since moved to Stanford. And many of whose students are um, occupying leading positions in China uh, today. And of course, um, uh, Dr. Sun is really one of the most prominent of them, if not the most prominent. He returned to China after getting his PhD and uh, has been for many years now, the um, head of the Shanxi Archaeological Academy, which is the leading institution organizing fieldwork and archaeological research in uh, Shanxi province. Um, Professor Sun is also uh, one of um, UCLA's long-term friends and collaborators, and we are for that reason particularly grateful to have him here today. Um, he came to UCLA in, I believe it was 2009, as a visiting scholar, and um, during this time, serendipitously, a possibility opened for a collaboration between UCLA and his home institution. And uh, thanks to the good offices of Dr. Sun, this um, collaboration was indeed launched and has been a resounding success. It is the um, 
the International Archaeological Field School at Yangwanjai, an important uh, Neolithic um, uh, site. Uh, a, some people would call it an early urban site. Some people would call it a supersized village. No matter what, it is an extremely important site in the northern suburb of Xi'an. And our team, in collaboration with um, uh, some very valued members of Dr. Sun's Institute have been able to go there and, uh, and train uh, young archaeologists in the um, ways of doing research, uh, archaeological um, ex uh, excavations in China. Um, for um, we've had now almost 10 seasons and we would be there we would have been there again last year and this year but of course we couldn't because of the pandemic so we hope very much that this collaboration which has since attracted a, a very positive note of the highest authorities will be able to resume very soon but um, professor sun is of course an expert not merely in um, in one particular uh, period of archaeology in, uh, in Shanxi, but has published about many periods. His, um, his dissertation research was on a um, Neolithic, uh, sorry, on a lithic workshop from the Western Zhou period, from the Middle Bronze Age, which he has since published in an exemplary archaeological report. And there's also a book in English published by British Archaeological Reports, which you, uh, those of you who don't read Chinese can read. It's, it's quite pathbreaking. And, um, and he has also supervised many other research projects covering the full uh, spectrum of archaeological work in Shanxi province. Perhaps the most important is the, the project about which he's going to talk about today, namely the newly discovered stone walled fortress site, um, early, an early political center uh, at Shimao in the far north of Shanxi province. That's what he's going to talk about uh, today. And we are very much looking forward to um, Dr. Sun's talk. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you for being such a good friend to UCLA. And uh, may I now give the floor to Dr. Sun. Thank you. Okay. So uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, thanks, uh, Professor Michael Berry and uh, Professor Lothar Wong Fong Hosen, and the and my old friend Professor Li Ming online. Um, uh, I'm, it is my great honor to attend the Samili lecture. Uh, uh, unfortunately, for the epidemic reason, I couldn't come to United States for the. Uh, for the lecture, but anyway, uh, I'm 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 still trying to introduce one of the uh, uh, one of the greatest archaeology in this century about uh, in the Neolithic uh, China uh, about the Shimao. Uh, okay, so. Uh, this this site is uh, uh, is uh, we call Shima. It's a village's name in in northern China. It has been hailed as one of the greatest uh, uh, discoveries uh, in the new century. Uh, it won the prizes of the uh, top ten discoveries in China twice, and uh, the world archaeology discoveries in. 2002 and 2003, and uh, uh, the segment uh, dates to around 2000 BC, uh, and uh, uh, during the middle to late uh, uh, Longshan culture of the late Neolithic uh, China and the, to the early Xia dynasty in the early Bronze Age, uh, it may uh, Symbolizing a symbolizer, a uh, long lost kingdom 
uh, which have never been recorded in the in the text. Uh, okay, let's see the uh, location. Uh, the the Shimao is uh, located in uh, in a town which called Gaojiabu town. Uh, the town used to be a um, soldier's campus for in the Ming Dynasty. It's around the uh, 14th century. Uh, and uh, uh, the site is, uh, 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 lies atop a, a hill near the uh, confluence of the uh, small river, uh, the Turi River. This, the Turi River is uh, a tributary of the Yellow River. Uh, uh, okay, let's see this one. Uh, actually, you can see the uh, this dashed line. This is a uh, Great Wall. Uh, the the Shima site. The site is just located in the uh, inner side of the Great Wall. Uh, it close to the uh, uh, the dead the southern uh, east southern east side of the desert area. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Before I uh, start my presentation, I would like to give you a general idea about the chronology of the early Chinese uh, history. Uh, you see the, uh, the blue line in the middle. Uh, the, it had, uh, this had been divided in two parts. The early parts is the pre prehistoric period. The, then after the, uh, to the right side is the historic period. Uh, the time, uh, the here is uh, where the site Shimo are located. It's just between the, uh, uh, the between the end of the Neolithic period and the, the start of the early uh, dynasty Xia. Uh, the uh, absolutely date is around the 2000 BC. Okay. The name of Shimao has been known since 1970s due to its association with the uh, uh, wonderful jades. Uh, it is estimated that uh, uh, around three to 4,000 uh, jade items kept in the uh, uh, museum uh, uh, overseas and include China and uh, private collections around the world uh, are probably derived from the Shimao site. Uh, uh, I, I should mention the, uh, uh, the professor Dai Yingxin, uh, actually he did the first, uh, 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 first archeological surveys in 1976 when he was uh, 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 assistant, assistant research researcher in my institute. And uh, he uh, collected uh, over 126 uh, uh, or seven pieces of the jeets. Uh, before the finding of the Sanxin uh, San Bay sites, this kind of vessel we called a uh, jade scraper or jade uh, ya zhang uh, uh, is one of the uh, it's very uh, unique and uh, most of the uh, researchers are, are interested in are very interested in the discussion of the um, dates and the, the uh, the culture and the background of this kind of the vessel. But um, 
Um, unfortunately, no, uh, no real conclusion has been reached. So I, I think it's so, uh, so far, uh, but the, one of the collector collection is this this jade face. It's the it's it it can be seen as a symbol of the Shimon site. Okay, uh, if we check all the other findings overseas museums and the private collections, we can see the collection of the Shimon site may started in uh, from nineteen. Uh, 20s by Peter Paul uh, in his French book. And he, ma he mentioned uh, some jades and a very typical jade yajang from the Yuling Fu. And uh, also, um, I should say that uh, the Professor Alfred Salmoni, uh, who was a Germany uh, American, uh, he wrote in his book, Chinese Jade Through the Wei Dynasty in 1963, when he, after uh, five after he died, uh, 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 in 1963. And in this book, he recorded us, he, tell, he told us a story about the collection of the Shimo Jade. That in 1929, when he was uh, uh, when he was uh, a curator in the Far Eastern Army, uh, Far Eastern Museum in uh, German, is German or Sweden, German, and uh, he was sent to Beijing, and he met some uh, uh, some uh, art dealers, uh, and uh, he collected some jades from Yuling Fu. This is uh, look, actually the original name of the Shimao site located, uh, Yuling Fu. And uh, more importantly, uh, these jades are very, uh, are very. Uh, typical and when you when, once you see the uh, real pieces you can definitely trace back uh, these vessels to the Shimao site um, because of the uh, color the shape and uh, something okay uh, uh, besides the um, uh, uh, the, uh, the Professor Salmoni uh, recording, we also trace back uh, some other clues uh, on the collection of the Shimos Jays uh, in last century, uh, including the collections from the uh, Minneapolis Art Museum in the United States and some in the British Museum and uh, also some uh, in the Fran in France. Uh, okay. Uh, yesterday I mentioned the finding of the uh, uh, of the how do I see this the jade uh, bronze ring with jade bronze ring ring. Okay, let's call it. Uh, and it is uh, very, this is not archaeological findings, uh, uh, but uh, just before the, re, uh, before the uh, archaeologists uh, start the survey of the Shimon site in, in 2011, and uh, we were reported that uh, 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 some private uh, collectors has a uh, some some G uh, have uh, lots of G's from Shimon site, and uh, when I went to the uh, his uh, collection, uh, his museum, I saw some very uh, special G's like this, the G's with uh, the jade ring with uh, a set of the uh, bronze ring with the cor 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 correlated or some, you know, the, the yard, the, yes. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> how do you see the Professor Dini? How do you see the this one? Oh, just these notches, like a notches. Yeah, mm -hmm. notches. And uh, this is uh, uh, also uh, after. Yeah, uh, we also uh, say some uh, the pottery collections, uh, particularly. Uh, this uh, uh, this vessels with uh, um, uh, cinnabar painting or the of the jars with uh, a large ear 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 earring ear, ear, and uh, this also the private collectors uh, pri private collections, and uh, uh, that. This find these findings are as uh, interesting and uh, 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 association association with the previous findings in 1976. Uh, I assume that, that there should be a very uh, should be a secret uh, inside of the Shimao site, but people didn't know much about that. Because uh, partially because of the hard condition, hard uh, living condition, and uh, then from 2011, uh, uh, my uh, institute uh, set up a, a, a ecological team, including uh, Yang Liping, uh, Shao Jing, and a a a a a group of young uh, young uh, uh, people from uh, my institute and the local uh, administration office. We started a regional survey, uh, survey and uh, 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 then in the after uh, in, after that, in the we started the uh, excavation, and uh, also uh, we did the. This uh, excavation in the in some in the Easter Gate, and uh, we call the Huang Cheng Tai, uh, the parish area, and uh, some um, dwelling residence uh, sites as well. At the same time, we conducted uh, uh, the multidisciplinary research with the scholars over the oh, uh, I can. I, I think I can see over the world because we have the scholars uh, from uh, uh, Stanford as Professor Li Liu, all the people from Melbourne University and the people from the England. And also, uh, I think my uh, friend, uh, Professor Lota and Li Min uh, went to visit the site um, uh, a few times. Okay, let's uh, see the uh, brief structure of the uh, of the site. Uh, the okay, uh, the site comprising uh, three distinct uh, enclosure. Uh, we call this Huang Cheng Tai, uh, the core area of the. Uh, or we can see the uh, imperial uh, city. And uh, the second uh, uh, part is the uh, inner enclosure, we call Nei Cheng. Uh, the other part is uh, exterior enclosure, uh, which may have uh, uh, more defensive purpose. And uh, because there is uh, dense findings uh, about the uh, residential structures, the ash pits, the uh, the uh, pottery kings inside of the inner city, and uh, uh, but in the outer city, uh, there's very few um, archaeological findings uh, features in the older city, very, I mean, very uh, shisha, very dotted, very few, 
but still have. Okay. Uh, okay, I this picture, this board view picture we may show you much more clear. You see the blue line is uh, a stone wall of the city of the inner enclosure. The right line is symbolizing the outer outer enclosure, outer stone wall. And after be, beside uh, outside of the uh, the wall, uh, the city, we actually find three or two watchtower sites along the uh, along the outside of the uh, the, the outer city. Okay. I will mention the, the Fan Zhuang's watchtower, watchtower in the later in my later speak. As you can see, from the east gate to the watchtower, there is a very good uh, vision. Uh, if the people standing uh, high, a little higher. Okay, uh, I start from the core area, Hong Chen Tai. Uh, you, you may uh, take this area as uh, uh, as the king's living place or the uh, or the palatial area because we found uh, uh, some very huge uh, structures and the very defensive um, stone walls. Shimao, uh, okay. Hongzhen Tai is located near the center of the inner enclosure. It is a tiered pyramid shaped mound with a flat top, uh, lined with a stone wall of the of ten to twenty meters in remaining uh, height. Uh, the top of the site, the top of the Hongzhen Tai measures over eight hectares. Uh, where a rammed earth building foundation. Uh, still uh, remain and uh, has been partially uh, exposed in the past uh, three to four years. Okay, this is a broad view of the Huang Chen Tai uh, uh, site. The top is uh, quite flat, and the, uh, uh, actually, this platform itself is quite uh, isolated by deep valley in the three different um, directions, or well, as only the way toward the inner city, inner enclosure is open. And uh, our main road, a main road from, uh, uh, from here, actually it's not a modern, it's not only a modern road, it's also a a uh, 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 time uh, uh, road um, to the, it's a main road to the inner city and the inner uh, and the older city gate uh, directions, which still can be clearly identified uh, uh, today. Okay, uh, from, 19, from 2006, we start the excavation of the Huang Chen Tai Gate. Uh, after uh, four years uh, continuously uh, excavation, the gate and the uh, section of the stone wall and the uh, on top of uh, the huge architecture are uh, partially uh, exposed. Okay. This is the gate. This is the gate of the Huang Chen Tai. If you, if if people uh, want to climb up or, uh, on the uh, on on the top of uh, the palace, you have to cross uh, this gate because because this is the only way for the Shima people uh, to climb up. And the, the other side we excavated is. Um, uh, how do I say Hu Chang? Yeah, 
it's a stone wall. It tears the stone wall to protect to pro protect the plat platform. Okay, uh, in the upper upper side, uh, there may be a, a pond, a huge pond for the uh, collection of the water. I guess it should be a very huge one. Uh, it's a uh, rectangular sh in shape, um, made by the stone uh, and, and deliberately designed. But unfortunately, it's still, it has not been uh, excavated so, so far. But uh, we did the excavation on the uh, top, uh, uh, the, the foundation, architectural foundation. Okay. Uh, let me see. Yes, uh, this one was uh, picture was taken in two thousand eight, after almost uh, um, uh, after the season season excavation. Uh, you can see the fountain day is is quite isolated and it's a pyramid like. Uh, uh, platform and uh, particularly on the this was from the top to the bottom it's uh, it's more than 10 maybe 20 or 30 uh, terraced uh, stone wall uh, step by step from the top to the bottom Okay, uh, in uh, the one of the biggest uh, discovery is uh, and it and it and identification of the large uh, palace uh, foundation uh, on the on the top. Uh, okay, before we started the uh, uh, introduction of the. Uh, architecture. I will give you a brief, uh, uh, general idea of the of what the Huangtong Day Gate looked like. It's a uh, bird view of the Huangtong Day Gate. You can see this is a stone wall, square stone wall uh, for the south stone wall on the north, and this is a square, uh, and this is uh, we call Wengcheng. Uh, maybe the barbecue is uh, um, English words, and uh, the south platform, north platform, and the inner barbecue, uh, barbecue. And if people want to uh, cross the gate and uh, climb up, climb uh, on top, you have to cross the the uh, the barbecue uh, from the. Uh, the the sides, so which make people uh, who want to step into the palace area more difficult, and uh, you can we can also see the um, the site the the uh, the gate were well, the gateway was uh, stone paved. Uh, by the uh, rocks, the flat rocks. And, okay, I show uh, you the, mm, uh, the part of the stone wall. Okay, this is uh, uh, after, this is uh, a picture showing the, uh, the final, the part, uh, the part of the excavation Scene. Uh, it is uh, look like a stone castle. Uh, if you tell, if you can see the different terraced uh, the stone walls, this all were built by the Shimo people in uh, before four thousand years ago, and it has been uh, rebuilt several times. Uh, you can see the. Uh, the different shapes and the, the small uh, rebuilt uh, remains. 
and uh, I should uh, say the uh, the stone wall. Uh, one of the stone wall preserved quite well uh, in the Huang Teng Tai. Yes, this you can notice that the wood log uh, inside it into the uh, into the the stone wall. This is a kind of the pine tree, maybe pine tree. Uh, yes, and some uh, was supported by the stone plate. Uh, the function of the stone plate, I guess, maybe uh, for for the protection of the wood. Okay. Uh, actually, the this is a kind of the uh, 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 architecture techniques which has been recorded in Han in the Northern Song Dynasty text. Uh, there are lots of the you know, plog, uh, the log remains found in the uh, stone walls, not only in the quantum type, but also in the other, other part. It, for this kind of the uh, phenomena, uh, you may guess it is a kind of the scaffolding or the wood or, or something else. Uh, according to the, um, we can see some similar remains in the Egypt and uh, people, according to the picture, they may be, the, the whole may re represent the scaffolding. Uh, but in Shimao site, uh, according to the height and uh, some other remains, I guess they are not uh, scaffold, uh, but uh, rather than it is, uh, 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 how do I say? Or the Earth uh, is a world uh, is a building technology. We call Jin Mu. It's like the steel beam in modern construction to enforce the uh, the whole struct uh, structure. Uh, we found some similar uh, uh, similar structure in the, in Germany in the, around the BC, around the BC uh, it's a mansion uh, op, opidum of the mansion uh, they are using the similar technology okay uh, the other thing the other uh, article objects found in the fountain tie is uh, oracle bones uh, uh, there's no inscription on on, on top on, on 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 top, but it is one of the largest findings of the oracle bones uh, in early uh, China, and uh, it uh, symbolizing that people who live in the Hongdong Temple in charge of the uh, ceremony uh, power or the ritual. Uh, Rachel, power. Yeah. Some other findings, um, like the stone, uh, stone decoration or stack, uh, partially, some is not, uh, not only a stone uh, sculpture uh, decoration, it, ha it has been used as a uh, stone structure, structure, such as this one, with some. Uh, it's like a Sanxin uh, Dui. It looks like uh, a snake here. A vertical eyes, uh, eyes like Sanxin Dui, uh, brown. Yeah, vertical. Yes, yes. It's uh, very much like this one, this one. But it's a cornerstone on the uh, stone wall. OK. Uh, some very strange uh, uh, cultural phenomena, 
we I call that uh Chang Yu Yu Chang. Maybe in English the J is embedded, originally embedded uh inside uh, the stone layers, stone wall. Uh these two pieces of the stone uh jade uh, the jade axe or falling down from the uh, stone wall or falling down from that uh, but it's it, they were preserved uh, very well very well and uh, um, actually uh in this this area you if we if 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 you want to um uh uh, if you you can, if you want to open this, you open this stone wall, you can find more expectations. Yeah, if you want to take the wall apart, you will discover a lot more jade. Yeah, if you want to take the wall apart, you will discover a lot more jade. Yeah, that's my expectation, but it, it should be the actual uh, expectation because you can see many jades. They are. Uh, in the collapses of the stone walls uh, or the surface um, of the living area. And uh, the other thing uh, is uh, finding of the uh, stone bronze custom mold. Uh, you can tell that the mold is uh, for the casting of the stone uh, bronze knife. And uh, actually, uh, this fighting, uh, the knife is uh, can be uh, taken as uh, early Bronze Age shape, uh, but uh, from the archaeological point of view, we are still uh, not decided uh, because this is not from the originally background arche archaeological background. Uh, it is from the uh, collection. Collapse the uh, deposit. I mean, it's upside down. But uh, anyway, um, it should not be later than uh, 16,000 BC, uh, maybe much earlier. Uh, I'm, uh, because it's not originally in the archaeological feature and the stratigraphy. But anyway, this finding gives some hints on the uh, uh, input of Chinese mythology in the early history. Mm, this is a possible way if we have more findings in the future about the bronze um, tools or bronze, um, I don't expect the final bronze vessels, bronze containers, but the bronze uh, azures, bronze, uh knives uh, there may be more and you see also see the bronze bracelet bronze bracelet with jade okay the bone workshop we have a, a sear uh, uh, a chain of the you know the from the raw material to different uh, manufacturing stages of the uh, bone needle making uh, yeah, the final product is these tiny uh, needles. Yeah, a uh, totally over uh, two hundred thousand of the needles. Wow, twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty. Yeah, 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 Twenty. Twenty thousand. Uh, um, pieces of the jade, of the uh, needle, bone needle were uh, immersed from this very, very limited area, maybe two square meters. So uh, I expect much more in the future uh, excavation. And uh, this uh, may uh, uh, remind us there is a workshop which ever be uh, constructed on the associated with uh, 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 the elites uh, house, elites palace. 
Okay, let's talk about the the choose the mouse harp. Mouse harp. Yeah. Uh, is the uh, in the excavation you can see this is uh, uh, mm, uh, this this side is still on the on the on the on the surface. So it's not like uh, the traditional Chinese Neolithic uh, sites. Most is underground. This is preserved quite well. So the uh, deposition of the, the stratigraphy is is mostly is up upside down, uh, especially before the uh, the site uh, the kingdom uh, collapse. Uh, so we did uh, very carefully sieving, and uh, we collect many uh, different sizes of the stone, the bone, the fish bone, and some jades, some total totalized pieces. Uh, one of the most interesting findings is. Uh, it is the identification of the uh, harp, the juice, uh, the maybe the mouse, mouse harp, mouse harp. It has been used to, used to uh, taken as uh, the hairpin. Uh, the first time I see, I saw uh, this very tiny, this maybe eight to ten centimeters in length. Uh, I guess maybe there's a helping for the uh, lady or the, for the young uh, girl. But if when we check some other findings, we, we found the most of the other, uh, the Huang, the harp recorded in the um, Chinese early history uh, including the Shi Jing and the, some other text. Uh, also, the actually the modern Jewish harp are still was still playing by the uh, people in the uh, Pacific Island in, in the southeast uh, country, uh, countries and also uh, and, the, and, uh, and the, as well as the people minority peoples in mainland China, China. Uh, okay, I I show you uh like show This this kind of Huang uh, no. fighting uh, in the from the the mainland China in some late Neolithic site as well as in the uh, uh, Siberia and the European uh, particularly this 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 fighting is here is in the Han Dynasty if we make a route of the um, uh, of the Huang's distribution, we can find the uh, Shimao, maybe the earliest, uh, um, the birthplace of the Huang uh, instrument. This is a world map showing the uh, modern Huang, different types of modern Huang in the world. Anyway, the, let's move to the sculptures, stone sculptures of the Huang Chengde. You can see the beast, beast uh, human beast face-like uh, uh, sculptures. 
these sculptures were find were found in the huge palace. The palace still remain uh, three to four meters uh, high, uh, which were constructed by the uh, the core the core were rammed earth. Uh, the four um, sides were uh, decorated or, or the pretended by the stone uh, stone wall. Uh, along this side, the south side of the wall, the platform wall, stone wall, we collect over 70, actually 70 pieces of the jade, of the stone, uh, stone sculpture. Uh, some are still preserved quite well uh, on the wall, on the stone wall, but some uh, clearly show uh, they are not originally in their place, like this. But I'm sorry, this is a, a little bit. Uh, uh, this is a face. This is the, another face. It's the same one, but it's upside down placed. Um, it hints that maybe this, uh, all this sculpture were removed from other maybe more than a god or stone god sh shri, sh sh uh, a temple or something like that. Uh, okay, we also find a totem-like uh, stone pillar with uh, be beast face like. Uh, I, I think this um, feature may symbolizing the god of the Shimo. Okay, it's uh, just on the middle of the main road to the uh, palace. Okay, some other smaller uh, stone pillars with uh, a human face or the, uh, or the whole body. Also some some features very similar like uh, uh, Liangzhu or other later early Shang Bronze Age image that look like this one. Some Shijia features you, you see the in the jade, Shijia jade. And also some Gaoli Ti de Jiu, Gao Fu Diao de Tu Xiang. High relief carving. High relief, yes. I'm sorry for my poor English. I try to make myself understood. Okay, some features uh, you can see is a little bit similar similarities with uh, Liangzhu uh, jade tone and some bronze, some bronze features, but it does not uh, directly show they must have some kind of the close relationship. It still need more discussion uh, in future, but uh, I've, if there is, I would say that uh, the, the, the whole Shijia He culture and the Shimao culture, they may have some kind of the contemporary uh, culture exchange uh, in the uh, uh, early second millennium, millennium BC, uh, you see some uh, some designs are very much similar. Uh, this is, uh, but uh, the, for in the other side other aspect i would also say that the build the stone the people use the stone to build their city and the people use stones to produce or to manufacture the different uh, stone statue they are not uh, um, not isolated they have a long tradition in the local in the uh, Northern China, 
because you can see from the Xinlongwa culture and the Zhaobao culture, even in the Hongshan culture, which is in the south, uh, northeast uh, China, uh, and much earlier than the Shimao times, maybe a thousand years earlier than the Shimao culture, they have this kind of the tradition stone built for the uh, uh, for the shrine or for the temples or the, also for the sculpture production. Okay, the um, people must uh, very much care about the date of the Shimao site because many findings are challenging our traditional knowledge about the Chinese early, early civilization. So we collect uh, over maybe 300, piece, uh, 300 samples for the data uh, uh, collaboration. This one was from the stratigraphy by Oxford University. It shows um, this, this uh, most of the object dating in the 2000 BC. We also do some by the UCL, by the beta analytic company, most of the dates from the strata uh, around 2000 BC. Uh, that's why I, am, I, I emphasize the dates because uh, people can never expect there is a, so much, uh, such a large size, such a large sized uh, stone, uh, urban cities, stone city are preserved um, so well. And uh, the, the, we had never uh, expected to find, to, to uh, expect that. That's why I uh, want to let people know the dates, not only from the archeological knowledge by uh, pottery typology, but also from the uh, scientific scientific uh, uh, database from different uh, institute. Uh, okay, the inner city. Uh, the this is a, a a a set of the stone wall preserved over maybe eighty uh, meters, and uh, it's above one meters above the current city. This is the older city, uh, but the whole length of the world is around uh, 10 kilometers. It preserved, uh, the best preserved one is about two, three or three to five meters. The inner city. Okay, last thing is I try, I, I will show you the excavation of the East Gate. This is was done in, in 2012, just beginning the finding of the Shimao. Uh, this is the gate is a very complex uh, uh, structure. And uh, you see this is a tall picture. You can see this is entries to the city. Uh, this is we call older Babikin. And uh, the north platform, south platform, uh, the inner uh, Barbican. So you may uh, get a general idea that there should be architecture of the Shimao architecture, who designed, who designed the whole city's planning. As we see, the uh, is the gate of the the structure of the East Gate is very much uh, similar to the gate in Huangcheng Tai area. They have a similar, very similar. Okay, we found some sculpts, stone wall, and the Boston uh, Ma Mian. Yeah, uh, this is Boston is built for uh, is a ring. Enforcement structure for protecting outwards from the city, from the city wall, and some 
stone structure. It's like this Boston is this modern city, modern Xi'an, a Ming Dynasty city wall. It to strengthen the defense power, defense power. Okay. Uh, I should uh, emphasize that ritual activities seem to have played a very important role at Shimo. It has been suggested by the human sculpts, uh, large quantities of the jades and the copper or the bronze objects, and or as well as the oral bones and the carvings. Okay, this is the sculpts. This is sculpts as well. It's all the uh, all the uh, uh, below the uh, the living surface of the Shimao people. The jades in the wall, the jades in the, uh, the clubs, the deposit deposition, the stone. This one still. Uh, in the stone layers of the, the of the wall, you see the uh, jade uh, X jade, uh, yeah. Some this is a very you see the jade or re jia gong jia gong is how re modify re modify the uh, pieces of the jade. It may. Uh, suggested that there should be a J workshop some somewhere nearby nearby the 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 Huangtun Tai Palace area. Okay, this I showed you before. Uh, the last feature I like mention is uh, Watchtower. The Watchtower is very interesting. It is a uh, square inside and a uh, uh, circle outside. Uh, it's very much similar to those finding in the Liangzhu culture or the Hongshan culture. They are um, the high platform for the elite cemetery. And uh, there's lots of the other all the, all the temple, lots of the trees um, in these two cultures. But unfortunately, after the Excavation of this, uh, I believe they are not uh, elites mode, modes, but uh, but rather than they are the um, uh, uh, they are the watchtower. Okay, this is uh, another inner city's feature, the residential area, maybe a, a blood clan small group inside of the uh, Shimao inner city. And they are living, uh, one living room, one cave living room, and one living room, one yeah, bedroom here. Also, the uh, very system is very complex and uh, it uh, dips in uh, 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 different uh, hierarchies of the people who have different uh, uh, kind of the wealth. Uh, people, these are rich people, maybe already elites, has the uh, jades and a set of the portraits. This is a small, we call the urban, children urban. It has been uh, collected by the uh, Daily utens pottery utensils, pottery maybe cooking vessels, yeah, that, like this triple li or some sanzu wong urn. Okay, we also did some you know some uh, multidisciplinary uh, research with scholars, uh, oh. oh scholars, uh, zoo archaeologists, uh, archaeobotanical archaeologists, um, you know, very, very broad kind of the uh, scholars. We did the uh, zoo archaeology. We found some very interesting uh, things, such as the finding of the alligator 
synthesis and uh, the horse actually this is has not been uh, uh, definite, definite uh, has not been completely assured but uh, uh, the the new discoveries we have much more the uh, horse uh, bones which may uh, uh, hints that uh, the earliest domestic horse in will happened in the northern area, uh, but this one we did the carbon. It's at like a 16, 1600 BC, but uh, we have some early pieces of the horse. It is quite important. It's related to the origin of the domestic uh, horse in China. We also did some relate some bot botanic analysis. It shows the Shima agricultural plants tips are very simple. Uh, it uh, complex the the, uh, the the major type is the foxtail millet and the blue corn millet. And uh, the living uh, is pos uh, is a kind of mixture of the agriculture and the husbandry uh, in northern China. But the uh, agriculture play a key uh, uh, a major role in 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 Shima society. Okay, if we see. When the first uh, dynasty emerged in the central China, uh, for the older, sea, older area, exterior area of the China, they are very complex. They have different regional polity, polities. Shimao is, Shimao is one of the who occupies in the Northern China and it's a very much powerful one. Uh, in uh, around uh, 2000 BC. Uh, also, the Shima is not a uh, uh, isolated uh, a huge city or super city. It has been uh, surrounded or supported uh, by many other smaller um, sites. Uh, uh, anyway, I would uh, try to finish my talk by uh, one or two sentences. Uh, this the finding of the Shima site give us a holistic understanding of the formative uh, period of Chinese civilization. And uh, the discovery of Shima help us redraw our picture of the political landscape in Neolithic North China. Shimao played a central role in the spiritual and the political world of the Northern China. And uh, the once, this once powerful kingdom centered in Shimao was complete, completely unknown in ancient textual records. Its discovery therefore also raises challenges to the archeological community in China, which has long been influenced by the received historiographic orientation. Okay, this is some preservation and the building of uh, the building of the museum. Uh, and we also use some traditional uh, method to preserve the wood, wood log. And uh, we also do some chemical uh, preservation and uh, conservation. This is uh, uh, I should also the Professor Lota and uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't find the uh, Professor Li Min's uh, picture when he was there. Uh, lots of scholar visit the site. Uh, this is uh, the museum. Will, oh, this is a good news. I'd like to see the Shimo Museum, museum will open mm -hmm. uh, next uh, May. At that time, everything will, I think the COVID, uh, the epidemic will, will gone. I'm looking forward to see 
all my friends, all professors coming back to China to, to see the site again. Many, thank you. That's my talk. Great. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Uh, this, this was marvelous. And I know that uh, Professor Lehman is very relieved because his services are practically not needed throughout this, this talk, as I predicted. And uh, now we already have several questions in the chat. Um, now, um, if we can release these people uh, into the public space, then they can ask these questions themselves. In fact, the first question comes from Lehman himself. Would you like to, uh, to head the way? Oh, sure. Um, my question is, we have a very impressive uh, east gate facing the plateau, but we don't have a gate that's facing the valley. I wonder whether that gate has been destroyed by the construction of the Ming uh, fortress, Gao Jiabao. Yeah, this is a good question. I will back to the structure. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. You, you need to click it. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can see it. Mm. Actually, there, uh, uh, yeah, this is a very nice, very interesting question. Uh, you see, this is a, a landscape, uh, uh, a line map of the Shimao city. The east gate is somewhere here, and we also find some inner gate. Actually, there, the east gate in, Along the uh, outer outer seat outer wall is uh, highest uh, is the most uh, complex complicated one, and uh, uh, there are maybe two or three gates still uh, finding here, but uh, uh, according the gate to the to the valley. I'm I'm also thinking about this question, uh, but uh, I don't know. For the modern, uh, for the the the, the tourist uh, road to the uh, to the site, uh, as uh, Professor Limi will rem uh, remember, there's nothing left, only a, a road, maybe destroyed by the um, by later people, not only the people from the Ming Dynasty, but also the modern people. But uh, for one thing, I need to. Uh, emphasized is to the this valley here. We found some very uh, unexpected findings here. Uh, this is this is a yako. The the this yako the place, it has two Longshan era yao very secret. If you look, it is a settlement. It has a group of people in this yako. 这个上的这个这个门哦，没有发觉，非常清楚，在这个区。哦，at oh, so, that corner, uh, there's like a cliff, uh, entrance, um, a very steep, uh, valley where he identified um, a, a multiple kind of a cave houses, probably for uh security forces. Yeah, it, is my answer. Mm. That is very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, um, the next question comes from Professor Mayfair Young from uh, UCSB. Mayfair, can we uh, can we get you on the screen to ask your own question? Otherwise, I can read it from the Q and A. Yes, um, I am muted myself, so can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Swin. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, wonderful because I've been very curious about uh, the Shimao excavation. Um, 
I, my question is, can you um, do an informed speculation about uh, the development of the uh, Shi Mao towards Xia and uh, Shang dynasties? Because uh, you showed uh, especially the uh, artistic motifs of the faces uh, and you showed the similarities with the uh, Shang uh, dynasty bronze ritual vessels. And um, of course, uh, you only seems you only found a uh, bronze being used for the knives. Um, so no ritual vessels, but you do have, <coughs> excuse me, you do have the vessels uh, buried with the graves uh, that are um, uh, clay uh, clay pots or terracotta. Um, so, uh, and I believe that Shang Dynasty was to the east of Shimao. So, can you um, just uh, give some um, hypothesis about how it is uh, that that they there are so many similarities in terms of the human faces with Shang Dynasty art and. Uh, uh, how do you think uh, it developed? Uh, is there a pretty direct development into Shang Dynasty? And, and uh, also the totem pole-like um, stone structures, do you know what they were used for? Okay. The stone, you mean the last question, last? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, that, those, yeah. those items, yeah. Stone, stone pillar. Okay. Uh, uh, you can speak in Chinese and then I can translate if you would like. Okay. 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 从石卯城址的这个属性或者它是什么人的城市去推测他们之间有直接的关联但是从石卯遗址的目前我们看到的这些石雕的现状来说还不排除它原本使用的石漆是石卯遗址最辉煌的时期也就是说它应该早于公元前两千至两千二百年这个阶段因为现在看到这些石雕呢它是一种非常规整的石头垒砌起来的而且这些石雕呢那么现在的我们看见这些刻的这些石雕呢很可能不在原始的位置上至于说它的年代呢我想呢是其实我这里有一张照片没来得及讲我可以给大家提示一下就
，舌头七度装饰起来的。这个是时髦废弃以后的一群人，挖成了在那个夯宫殿废弃以后呢，又朝下挖建成的房子。那么这个年代呢，是典型的我们考古学上叫神文类遗存，它就是朱开沟文化的东西，啊。不是这个大建筑所在的时代，所以它和它大概年代呢，我们看到有些石雕年代应该处在这个商代的范畴，但和商，包括石卯最辉煌的时期和夏二里头之间呢，似乎并没有太直接的联系。嗯，那么最后一个问题就是，哦，我我那我我先给大家呃翻译一下好吗？Uh, so uh, everyone heard my question in English. Uh, so Professor Swen uh, said that, uh, of course, there are um, amazing um, similarities and likenesses in the uh, human faces and art motifs of uh, Shi Mao and uh, later Shang and uh, Shang Dynasty mainly. And but we cannot rely only on um, the. The artistic uh, motifs to uh, conclude that they were any kind of direct uh, relations. Um, actually, uh, he believes that um, there's a hypothesis that he and a group of uh, archaeologists uh, are making that um, what we see of the stone images of human faces uh, are actually dating back to an earlier period, uh, much earlier than uh, the dating of 2000 to 2200 BCE. And uh, it goes back to uh, the, the height, the peak of uh, Shimao's uh, development that is prior to this period because uh, there are many indications that those uh, carved stone uh, bricks are have been moved and relocated. So they probably date much earlier than the dating of Shi Mao uh, Fortress City as a whole. I think, you. yeah. Huh. yeah. 这个您提到那个石柱啊，就是像这种石柱的东西啊，它其实在石卯的还不少。还发现这个是最大的一件，嗯、呃，这个、这个石柱子。这个我们想呢，现在因为它肯定不是嵌在嵌在墙体里头的，它在那个通道上面，呃，而且顶部呢还有一个圆窝窝，一个也不排除它是一个相当于屠龙柱一样，上面还有一层，对吧？但是这一件呢，我们能够看到这里它是原本就是被人给有意的砌住在一个石头圈里头固定好，而且固定放在原始的。这个呃，这个地面上 ，surface 地面上。So, uh, these uh, totem-like um, uh, pillars, um, they are located along a major pathway, and uh, at the base, you can see that somebody uh purposefully uh tried to uh, secure them. Uh, with a rock there. Uh, we also note the possibility that uh, they were taller. They had other things above them, um, like some sort of a round um, stone um, structure. Um, yeah. So uh, they, were they moved to the, the uh, pillars? Moved what? Just the... Uh, 呃，图腾这个柱子是不是也被移动了？嗯、uh, ，那那 not not all were were removed. Some maybe, uh, you you see the smaller one, the smaller pillar, smaller totem like pillar, which may like sixty sixty centimeters. They are falling down, maybe from the top or somewhere. They are mixed with the soil, the uh, the rocks. But uh, this one was um, in the original uh, living surface mm. in the pathway to the, you know, to the stat to the architecture. Mm. Our next question comes from Professor Liu Li. Uh, are you still there? Uh, yes. 
Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, 你好，周勇。嗯、um, ，OK， 呃、uh, ，Yeah， 呃、uh, ，I have actually several questions. So、uh, I'll just read it. Um, what was the population size of Shimao this first, and how thick is the Huangchengtai deposit? Uh, is there anything below the uh palace foundations, or the do you have you drill the, the uh the site and find out what would be the earliest uh occupation at that location? And uh, uh, why was Shimao attractive to the surrounding regions? Uh, uh, because it seems the the re uh, all those material come from all over the place and uh, uh, very far away to uh, reach to the Yangtze River. So there must be some kind of a reputation at Shimao. So what kind of what nature of this uh, attract attraction of this site? And uh, um. And the last one is how was the flourish of Shimao related to climatic change at that time period? Because four thousand、uh, BP is supposed to be、uh, some kind of、um, dry and cold episode in North China, and a lot of people think that、uh, um, it's related to the decline of Longshan culture. But uh, uh, why Shimao flourish? At this time and that at this location, um. So, uh, that's <laughs> maybe too many questions, but uh, but please try <laughs> if you can, uh, give us some answers. Okay, 谢谢刘老师的问题。老师的问题很难回答。嗯，您呃呃，您这个好像说的，您能在汉语给我稍微简简要说一下吗？我。啊，第一个就是这个石毛的这个人口有多少啊？这个你就就我们我们说这个，就看说是一个很大的城是吧？一个 urban center， 但是实际上它高低不平的净值高。呃，那这个你能不能 estimate 就估计一下这个呃这个城市人口？对 ，OK， 啊、uh, ，Yeah， 啊 ，call， 呃呃呃呃。It, the question about the estimate a population of the Shimao Kingdom, but it's hard to do. I know、uh, when I started with Professor Li Liu, and I reading some publications,、uh, the the、uh, Western archaeology, they are trying to do a, a statistic or the calculation of the、uh, prehistoric.、Uh, Uh, population est estimate, but I trying to do that in Shimao side, but it's very hard to get a, a clear impression about the population because the site, is,、uh, the Shimao we I call I like call that kingdom. The kingdom occupies uh, it's like sixteen、uh, uh, isolated. Uh, hill, small hills. So、uh, it's like Huangcheng Tai. It's a、uh, independent. It's a quite independent one.、Uh, it's other smaller or the larger or or the hill. The hill. Some are quite flat. Some is is very、uh, deep.、Uh, if we compare with the findings in Zhai Mao Liang. Which is a smaller、uh, village and the Shimao time. It's there is、uh, over maybe something like forty、uh, family houses there. The village, the whole village, because the site was almost uh, um, completely uh, excavated. We can estimate it as we can estimate.、Uh, That the site is occupies like two、uh, hundred thousand square meters in area, so two thousand square meters. It's like twenty、uh, thousand. Yeah, twenty thousand. Oh, twenty, twenty, twenty. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's like thirty、uh, uh, to forty family. I I think I showed that picture. Here, 
uh, families here. Uh, so, uh, to the Shimao, maybe less than 10,000 people here, people in, inside of the city. So, should we multiply this figure of two to three hundred by the 16 hills that made up the capital at Shimao? Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh,就是说把每个,就在这个Shuma 对也可以这么算但是但是比较复杂的是时髦它是一个它不是一个像两组一样几乎平面式的它是一个可以展开的山坡上可以住很多人所以这个计算稍微要难一些而且我们还不确认哪个山头上到底有多大面积是跟生活
in the Shimao who have has the power had the power of communicating with the God of the uh, with the God of the heaven because you see the, uh, that that is there is a uh, lots of the um, object uh, uh, associated with the uh, uh, divination or the or the ritual ceremony uh, such as the uh, mouth harp and the the ego the the very large set of the uh, pottery hawks or ego something all these objects show that uh, the shimo elites uh, was uh, is a saint city uh, people are willing to put their treasures or give their treasures give their luxury goods to the to the elites shimo elites to uh, 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 ask for the or hope for their oaths uh, fortune. Maybe yeah. Not. Okay. So uh, uh, um, I I would assume that is the power of control. Uh, the weather, you know, especially yeah. the, during this uh, uh, drought period. But mm -hmm. um, I'm also puzzled with this. If if this uh, uh, elite has, has a religious power, but why mm -hmm. there's so many needles produced yeah. <laughs> at this location? So how this... could that needles related to the religious power? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, yeah. The 这个问题很有意思，真的。我刚好和我跟刘老师在做那个西周的那个。I, I used to do, um, uh, did my PhD on the Lysic Jade, uh, Lysic, Lysic uh, uh, Jue earrings. Um, that uh, people uh, produced uh, the ordinary uh, craft products does not mean, uh, particularly bef before the three dynasties, does not mean does not uh, uh, mean they are uh, ordinary. Craftsman, uh, the people who are in charge of the high technology, such as the needle needle making, they are possibly themselves are elites, or they have high social status. Uh, actually, before the the Zhou Dynasty, the crafts the craftsmen, uh, including the bronze uh, casting bronze. Uh, the craftsman and the uh, the pottery uh, pottery is not another thing. Some they they are living very close to the uh, elites complex, elites uh, house. Uh, so for the needle uh, needle production, uh, the the quantity of the needle is much more over. Uh, the their own request their own necess necessities, so I think they may be used as um, uh, exchange or or the uh, 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 trade or the control the control the below the small small because this very difficult, the small hole on the needle bottom is very, very tiny. You can, it's hard for you to put an, a, a, a hair through the, the hole. So the, uh, if I may translate the, the, the lighter part of this question, it's um, the idea is that um, these needles were used to assert the, the control over um, various subordinate settlements and uh, and manufacturers because they are so difficult to manufacture. Couldn't have been just made at the house. Mm -hmm. 
my, uh, my, my on this would be that, of course, uh, you know, if this was an important ritual center, one would imagine there was also a um, significant textile industry making the kinds of clothes needed in ritual. So that that is, that all makes sense. Um, but let's go to the next questioner. Uh, and uh, I believe that is Zhang Liang Ren. Um, uh, Zhang Liang Ren, are you here? Can can we unmute you, or shall I just read the question? Ah, Lu Lao, hello, I'm here. You need to. Oh, thank. Ah, ah, that Zhou Yong, hello. Ah, you. Thank you. I'm here. 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 我有两个问题，一个就是，呃，怎么说，呃，这个时髦的那个好多的石头啊、呃，这个是用的比较多，呃，有一些是天然的石头，有些是经过加工的啊、呃，像那个石雕什么的，啊、呃，这个在中国好像是不太常见啊，因为在中国发现有很多的这个城址一般都是这个夯土的，但是你这个地方这个石头用的很多。那么我注意到，就有一些就是黄子台的那一些石块，那个修那个怎么加工的比较整齐，看上去像那个砖头。我不知道你注意过没有？对对，您说的很对，男人说的很对。呃，这个实际上石锚的用量最大的就是这种石头，这个是我放的是东门附近的，这个大家看起来好像不是大大小小有区别。实际上，最新的黄城台越往黄城台去，这个石头呢，整个就从外形上来看呢，就是砖头，就是非常方方正正的，而且非常体量非常比较大，和我们现在那个有键盘的比键盘还长，比那个呃这个桌台式电脑那种键盘还要大，很方的大方块，很厚，加工的非常非常精美。呃，这个大部分石头是是越往等级越高，石头加工的精细程度越高。如果明年大家有机会去看的话，呃，我想一定会很吃惊的。在尤其是在呃皇城台的那个大型建筑的后部区，它没有太太被后面的人动过，整个保存的那个状态非常超出我们的想象。So the question is actually in the Q&A, everybody can read it. It was about uh, whether the stones at Shema, especially in the, in the palace area, were standardized in, in size so that they could be um, uh, arranged in almost like brick-like masonry. And Professor Sun says, yes, indeed, there is this, and they have been carefully uh, modified and carefully worked so that they could they can be put together in the way that, that you can see here in the slide. And this is particularly true in the palace area, and there are some, par some, um, some areas in the rear of the palace that haven't been excavated yet, but this is particularly clear. So um, uh, we, can, we can all look forward to seeing that. When we go to see the new museum, I don't have any other questions in the Q and A. Um, uh, is there anybody else who would like to speak? Otherwise, I would like to revive Professor Yuli's last question, which was about uh, the the fact that this was. Uh, theoretically, at least we, we believe that um, the period when um, Schumau was flourishing uh, was a period of um, climatic um, hardship and uh, the climate became drier and colder. And whether this, um, uh, and uh, uh, Professor Liu uh, was wondering about uh, what the relationship between this uh, ecological trend and the um, the development of a major center out in the northern um, marginal zone have been. Yeah. Um, if you uh, want uh, to uh, 
，就是因为在研究环境考古学家和考古学家合作的结论是，确实在呃距今四千年前后有一次气候干冷的变化，呃，但似乎就在中国的北方来说的话，有两个人口的最强大的时期，就是整个它的人口呢密度呢。也许超过了中原的腹地，一个是在五千年前后，就是仰我们叫仰韶文化的晚期，就那个区域叫海生不浪文化或者什么，就这个时期的遗址特别多，只要你碰见新时期遗址，绝大部分都是这个阶段的，就仰韶晚期，大概距今五千年前后。另外一个呢，就在龙山的晚期，龙山时代的晚期，就是我们的四千。一二四千四千年前后，呃，以包括以石卯为代表的，呃，那么石卯的消亡或者石卯人群的最终去向呢？像我昨天讲的，跟陶寺呢，我们不能确认，就所有的北方的石卯族群呢，最后都南迁了。我也许呢，也许呢，一部分。比如陶寺代表的一支呢，是从石卯下去的一支，也不能排除。但是这个人口的流动的方向，应该是，我觉得应该是没什么问题的，应该从北方往南走。呃，但是从对于大部分的其他的中小型的石卯的呃遗址来说，为什么突然消失？呃，实际上这和人类史上的很多文明文化一样，现在还找不到很确切的原因。但他明确的能看出来，他被相当于他这个遗址呢，在商代早期的时候，就是公元前三千六百年前后的时候，被有另外生活习惯的一群人，他的最典型使用的器物呢，就是那种陶砾上有有那种像蛇一样的纹饰的这群人，这群人很可能来自于更北的地区，占据了。我我简单回答一次。Hey, I will I will try to translate this.、Um, it's a very interesting answer. So、um, yes, there is this notion of a climatic change. There's also a, a notion that there were two population peaks in prehistoric China, especially in the Shanxi region, namely around 3000 BC at the end of the Yangshao period, and then again in the period represented by、um, Shimao around 2000 BC at the end of the Longshan period, and that of course was then followed by a quite dramatic population collapse. Which we don't really quite understand yet.、Uh, these kinds of collapses do happen in human history occasionally, and they they are a mystery. But it was at that point that, of course, Shimao also、um, uh, was abandoned. This, this urban center came to an end.、Um, whether this has to do with the ecological developments or with other de developments is hard to tell. But one can tell apparently the influx of a group of people possibly related to、uh, Shimao. Uh, in、uh, in an area further to the southeast、uh, at Taosu,、uh, this is in fact the topic that、uh, Professor Sun talked about、uh, to us yesterday. And、uh, whether、uh, and it is it seems clear that the direction of population movement was from north to south during this period, and perhaps this triggered further uh, further um, unrest. Uh, that's now very hard to tell.、Um, In the Shimao area itself,、uh, there seems to have been somewhat of a hiatus, and it isn't until about 1600 BC, about a couple of centuries after the end of Shimao, that a new group of、um, inhabitants moved into the area, characterized by a kind of、uh, Li, a tripodal vessel with these pouch-shaped feet and a kind of snake motif appliqued on. Um, which is very characteristic, and these these seem to have come from even further north. So these are clearly a different group from the people who had previously、uh, inhabited Shimao and who seem to have gone, who have been gone by by that point. I think that was more or less what Professor Sun said.、I、may have forgotten uh, to uh, mention some of these, his points. Thank you. Very nice. Very wonderful、uh, translation.
Professor Liudi would like to follow up. Uh, yes, uh, thanks for taking my question. So I have another uh, question. Um, maybe uh, I hope you have some answers for it. Um, uh, recently, there are quite a lot of studies about um, language and archaeology. So they call that uh, uh, archaeolinguistics. And it seems uh, then there's a two major uh, language families in North China. One is Central Tibetan language. The other is what they now call the trans eurasian language before they called uh, Altai uh, language family. So um, have you <laughs> thought about uh, what kind of language Shima people would speak? Is it Central Tibetan language or um, uh, the trans eurasian um, you know, when you talk about this uh, sacrificial um, victims, those uh, women, uh, they are genetically related to the Xia Jia Dian. So the Xia Jia Dian is in the Northeast area and this considered the area, uh, people in that area uh, spoken trans Eurasian language. So this kind of um, uh, uh, <laughs> conflict between the Shi Mao group uh, and uh, the, um, the people in the north, was that related to the two different language uh, families I, and not just uh, uh, the lifestyle? You know, I think the lifestyle is quite similar because in the north is also archaeopastoralist uh, and uh, Shima also has uh, uh, the new development towards that direction. But um, is that the anime uh, was uh, formed because they speak different, spoke different languages? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Okay. Uh, yes, I I, know, I, I, I'm, I read that uh, briefly, the introduction of that article, but the question is quite, I, I don't think I have the answer uh, whether the uh, the the Shima people speak uh, the Euro uh, language or the um, Arte, something like that. Um, but uh, for sure, the um, the Shima and the lower Xiadian cultural people, uh, they have very uh, closely uh, relationship. Uh, for the tradition of the uh, fortifications uh, building and for the particular for the you know for the uh, very typical instrument uh, the mouth harp they are they are use, also used in the lower Shadadan culture and also the Shimao Shimao culture and they use the stone buildings stone wall stone bastions uh, stone uh, living room, but for the language, I, I, I cannot, I have no idea, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad that you are being cautious about this because this is a very thorny issue. Let me just uh, throw two more complicating factors into this debate. Um, uh, you may know the book uh, on uh, petroglyphs that uh, Esther Jacobson from uh, the University of, uh, of Oregon recently published, in which she um, proposes with rather interesting reasoning behind it, that um, certain population groups um, that now live way out in Northern Siberia and who are um, speakers of a completely different language group now, uh, sometimes called Paleo-Asiatic, were um, uh, inhabiting the northern fringes of the Chinese culture sphere during the late um, uh, Neolithic and early Bronze Age. So there's at least one th a third possibility of, of a different group from the Ural-Taic or, uh, or Trans-Eurasian group and the Sino-Tibetan group. And let me throw in a fourth one. Don't count out the Indo-Europeans. They were expanding during this period. And they also um, uh, produced, you know, um, fortresses with bastions around them. So it's hard to know. I um, I would uh, I would be very careful here, and wait for further research. 
And of course, even if you know the genetic makeup of, of a person, you still don't know what his, his or her ma uh, mother tongue was. Um, for instance, um, um, our Chinese American um, friends whose mother tongue is English um, would be probably misdiagnosed if, uh, if the, their language affiliation were just um, to be inferred from their paleoanthropological remains by future archaeologists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, question. Further questions? I don't see any more on the... Um, on, uh, on oh, Xi Liye has a question. Xi Liye has a post. Oh, where is it? Where is it? I don't... Uh, in, oh, in, in the chat. The in the Q&A, where don't I see that? Well, can we, can we, can, can we can, can, out? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here, thanks. Oh, thank you, very good. I'm sorry, that just doesn't seem to show here. Please. No, it's okay, it's okay, I understand. It's, it's, it's overwhelming, lots of, lots of information and wonderful discussion. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Sun. I really enjoy your talk, learn a lot. Um, I'm going to change my question a little bit. Actually, I wanted to follow up with um, Professor Zhang Liangren's question about the stone. Can we call it stone brick? Stone, whatever the very regular, very um, standard, well-made stone components to construct things in the um, Huang Cheng Tai. Yeah. So you mentioned that closer to the Huang Cheng Tai, it looks like the more effort was invested into making the stone components for all of this construction. I wonder, were the stone all the same raw material throughout the site, or do you see variation? Were they local? Um, do you suspect that maybe they, the components were processed at the site or prepared somewhere else and then transport to... Um, Mm -hmm. You mean the stone, right? Yeah. Okay. Um,它的石头的原料是整个遗址都是一致的吗?还是你能看到不同的石头的原料还有来源?它们是不是本地的?然后就说它这个制作,这个石构建的制作是在石毛完成,然后就在这里构建的,还是说别的地方准备好了运
after they transfer to the place where need to be uh, make a wall or some kind of other structure, they need further uh, remodeling because we find a different size of the stone hammer, stone hammer. They are the main, the, uh, this hammer are mean to for the uh, stone brick uh, further re, remodi remodifying, remodifying. Yeah, I, I think, that, is that clear? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. clear. Thanks. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm being told by the higher authorities that it is now past six o'clock and we have to end this meeting, which is really too bad because I'm sure there are many more open questions and the topic is endlessly fascinating. But let me thank Dr. Sun once again for his wonderful talk and wish him all the best of luck for continued research at Shimao and in Shanti province. And, uh, Hope that we can meet again in person before long. Thank you very much. And thank Michael, you. If you would Have like a nice to... weekend. Thank you all. Michael, thank you. Would you like thank to say you. some final words to conclude the meeting? Yeah. Just again, reiterating our thanks to you, Professor Sun. Thank you, Lothar, for so wonderfully moderating. And also thanks to everybody for this. Is we're heading to the very tail end of our events for the quarter. And so thanks everyone for your support uh, throughout this quarter. We have one final event on December 2nd, and we hope to see some of you there. And again, have a good evening, good morning, and take care everyone. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.